Millions of people live a better every day when extraordinary people come together. It happens when smart, talented people work side by side to solve complex problems. One of those complex problems impacting everyday life is playing out in northern Minnesota, where clean water and a better life is the result of an innovative lake sewering project. It's all beautiful, and that's why people come here. There's no question about that, and that's why a lot of people stay here and live here. To me, there's no beauty like Rainy Lake. The Island View Project is a accumulation of uh, many years of trying to bring wastewater treatment out into the lake area from International Falls. Much of the area is bedrock and so that presented technical and funding challenges for the project because the project's more expensive when it's through bedrock. We didn't use a conventional sanitary sewer system that you'd see in a municipal system. We used a small diameter pressure system and we use that so we can directionally drill through the soil or bedrock and make the project financially feasible. We recently searched this for years and this without a doubt is the best solution. So I think it's going to help the residents here. It's also going to help development. Big project and a lot of that will be drilled through rock so it's, it's going to be pretty amazing when it gets done. Safety comes first when traveling from point A to point B. Safety for both people and animals. Our particular wildlife crossing, um, it was underground. There are some that are above ground. It's an intermediate phase of a larger scale project. I think this project and the, and the benefits that we're realizing from the wildlife underpass um, will hopefully help people realize the importance and the need through this entire corridor. But I think we've, we've seen the safety improvement for those traveling between Bayfield and Drago. It was really a fun project to work on. You know, we landscaped it when it was all done. To, to make it really attractive for the deer and we put in wildlife fencing like eight foot tall to direct the deer into our underpass. It was surprising when during construction we were already seeing tracks. There would be a track hoe parked in here with tracks running right beside it. So I mean they, they were going to use it and that's really encouraging. If I had one word to describe this project I would say perseverance. I would say the team really pulled together and persevered and worked through all those issues for a success. Whether it's 25,000 cars or one bicyclist traveling through a busy intersection, safety matters. The traffic actually crosses over and you are on the other side of the road. Um, and the reason it does that is to better handle the left turn traffic movements and they're not controlled by a traffic signal. So it really improves efficiency. When we compared the different interchange types, we looked at conflict points, combining traditional intersections, roundabouts, and the DDI, and it actually proved to have the lowest number of conflict points, which is a direct correlation to safety. It's a big improvement, and it's it's just a really smooth, it's a, it's a weird interchange, it's an innovative interchange, but the traffic patterns right now are so smooth and so much more safe, um, people don't even really notice. They get through so easy. We just feel like we're part of a team, and it was a challenging project, had to be delivered in a very short time frame, and you're able to do that because of that collaboration and working relationship that we have with the county, and that really makes the project enjoyable. Sometimes the most innovative infrastructure work happens underground. There's so much more to a road than what's on the surface. What, what's, what's underground is every bit as important and usually twice as complicated. The project was approximately 20 blocks, uh, replacing aging infrastructure, and replacing streets, curb and gutter, and sidewalk in places where it needed to be replaced. It started out as being only 16 blocks. It got four blocks tagged onto the west to extend a new storm sewer main all the way to an outfall. It turned out really nicely. It's a, I think it's a really good finished product. Honestly, one of my favorite things about the project is we did a bore under the railroad, 23 feet deep, the storm sewer under the railroad, and 24 inch transmission line for water under the railroad. And it was actually really fun to watch that happen. Teamwork does make successful projects and builds relationships. We work really closely with uh, SEH on all the project coordination. It's been uh, 
great relationship. The city did a survey of what folks wanted to see for recreation activities in the city. So lo and behold, what came up was a winter recreational park. We have a, a tubing hill with automated snowmaking equipment, carpet lift, lighting. Uh, we have a, a day lodge, which is a separate project. It's, we'll retreat that as our, our warming house. Another separate project in, involved is an ice skating rink, which will double as a splash pad, and then a recreational trail. We don't really live in a mountainous region here in <laughs> Iowa, but to be able to find a hill that could support those sorts of activities. And actually, as it turned out, I mean, this was a perfect location for that. We're, we're projecting about 20,000 tubers uh, coming annually to this park. So that's going to generate a lot of economic impact for our community and um, the communities in the surrounding areas. Making everyday life better sometimes means completing complex projects in tight spaces while keeping the roads open. It was like a game of Tetris. Uh, we had equipment on the sidewalk on Penn Avenue. We had equipment tucked up against the fire department. The county would not let us shut Penn Avenue down even the, to a single lane in this area, so we had to jam pack everything on the sidewalk or as tight as we can into the facility. There, we used the back parking lot quite a bit, as much as we could. It was a complete exterior rehab of a one and a half million gallon elevated legged water tower with miscellaneous modifications including the roof handrail for telecommunication support and the catwalk handrail around the equator. SEH was a good company to work with. I mean, we brought up issues, they tackled them right away or explained why we couldn't do it. Any guesses on how many gallons of paint are needed for a 1.5 million gallon tank? I believe it was somewhere in the neighborhood of about 500 gallons. Televised water mains and trenchless technology may be the solution when excavating isn't an option. Very rarely do we do projects that are between two restaurants on one side with outdoor seating and we're going underneath a river with a bridge next to it that's a pedestrian mall and more outdoor seating for the restaurants. We didn't have any as built from uh, 1897, I'll just, we have or maybe some stick drawings with no profiles, which led us into televising the water mains. Nobody knew if the pipe had bends in it. We had to prove that it was straight enough to receive the technology. We also wanted to know what was the condition of the pipe, because later on when you clean it, in the case of if you're under a river, you don't want river water getting in. It's gonna have an impact. It's pretty ingenious uh, on how to fish something inside the water main and get data back. So in the whole scheme of things, the expenditure was definitely worthwhile. A 70-year-old water treatment plant was also in need of repairs to extend its life. The original filters had been in place since the early to mid-50s. We had a lot of problems with the old stuff. Uh, it was a constant source of you know, maintenance. We hired uh, SEH to be our consulting engineer in the design process to basically address two issues. One was to address our ability to filter our water. The other part of the project was to address some of our pumping abilities. Some of the modifications throughout the plant were the four gravity filters that needed to be completely rehabbed had never been taken apart so the entire media inside the filter that filters the iron and the manganese was removed and un new under drains installed. You know, SEH developed a, a plan for us. They, they took a look at our system, they took a look at the plant here and they've given us a roadmap on how to get into the future. When smart people come together Big ideas come to life. The construction of a pedestrian and bike bridge came with its challenges. We took a lot of that wetland and we covered it with a fabric and then we brought in the fill and placed it on top of that. And at the end of the, const the construction in the center area, we peeled all the material out of there first and then took the fabric up and it really did a nice job of just bouncing back. Getting the concrete to that center span was an issue and we ended up piping the concrete through a culvert. Some brainstorming and just planning ahead with the contractor. When people started using it for the first time, it was the most satisfying part of a project. And being involved from start to finish, you 
get kind of a special sense of accomplishment. So these projects do not just go away. They are here long term. So we put our best into it. We use good materials. We have good planning. We tried our best to make sure that it's going to be useful for its intended life. When a developer, consultant, and village came together to solve a complex challenge, what was once a contaminated industrial site and quarry is now a multi-million dollar development in a revitalized downtown. Initially, when I purchased the land, the objective was really didn't know what to do with it because you couldn't see the quarry because probably 15 to 20 feet in, it was solid trees. So I kind of grappled my way in towards the quarry and I saw this magnificent quarry and I said, this thing is just majestic. So I said, this is gonna be the centerpiece of our development. What we really bring to the table is that understanding and really put ourselves in a developer's shoes and really put, put ourselves in a community's shoes and try to figure out where's the win-win here and how do both entities uh, win to get a project moving forward. SEH was actually very accommodating and they understood the challenges here. They understood the water issues. They understood the retention upon the issues that we had. We're trying to reinvigorate our downtown, as many communities are, um, and so this brings um, well over 300 to 400 people into our downtown living here, and they bring a life to our Main Street. At airports across the country, businesses count on daily operation, which means no downtime for the runways. The runway portion of the, con of the construction project was one month. Or actually 24 working days so it was a very tight timeline for the amount of work that was done and then following the runway reconstruction there was taxiway reconstruction similar timeline in short for the amount of work that was done. Having 1432 down for any given length of time is very detrimental to the business here at the airport so in the project we built in a displaced threshold which allowed us to keep the uh, airfield operational still for the heavy use it has. And we had a lot of different contractors a lot of trucks just a lot of personnel so it was just an exciting project to see so much happening at once. Basically, if you keep an airport operating like this, you see business growth, you see employment increases, you just see a great reward in seeing things happen. Sometimes the key to a successful project is perseverance. Years of perseverance resulted in a new training facility for emergency responders. It, it was a long road, it took a number of years from when we started, uh, you know, with the, uh, the idea, idea to build this facility and come up with funding and then the actual construction of it was done in phases over a few years, so it seemed like kind of a long project, but it's, it, it, in the end, you know, I think it ended up being what we had hoped it would be and, and maybe even then some. So the two types of building we have, the one that we're actually standing next to now is what we call our live burn building. So we actually have pallets and hay and straw that we use to create real fires. The other building is our prop building and that's actually designed as a house. So someone stands there with a little computer and they can push buttons, they can raise the flames, lower the flames and they can immediately shut it off and evacuate it if there's an issue. And with SEH, they followed through with us, they stuck with us at the whole time. So I think in their mind this was an exciting project and they did an outstanding job for us from the beginning to the end. Millions of people live a better every day when extraordinary people like you come together. Thank you for being a part of our story.